Hi, welcome back. It's me, Scientist Kate. This is Grade 3, Weather and Climate, Lesson 3.3, Seasons and Climate, Part 1. How are you doing today? I'm great. The weather in Seattle, Washington is beautiful. It's sunny and dry, and it's warm outside. As soon as we're done with our lesson today, I'm going to hit the hammock, read a book, and enjoy the awesome weather. For this lesson, you will need Student Notebook, page 43. It looks like this. The title says, What is Average Precipitation? All you need is that, something to write with. Pause this video right now and go grab this investigation notebook page and then meet me back here. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, all right, welcome back. Remember, we are investigating this question. How can we predict what the weather in a place will be like many years from now? Like, how can we see into the future? We need to know how to do that because we're trying to decide which of these three islands would be the best place for an orangutan reserve. Remember that in chapter one, we looked at one day of data and we thought we had our mind made up. But then in chapter two, we got a month's worth of data and we changed our mind. Now we're trying to look at a long-term range of data so we can make a good decision for the orangutans over many years. In the last lesson, we investigated many years of temperature data for Anchorage, Alaska, so that we can practice looking at data over the long term. What did we notice about the weather data over many years in Anchorage? Think about it and tell me what you think. Thanks for sharing your ideas. I noticed about the weather data over many years in Anchorage that every single one of the six cards we looked at had the same shape. Do you remember how we used our finger to trace the shape of the bars? Every time, every year, we found about the same shape where the temperatures started low at the beginning of the year in January, February, March, and then they got warm in the middle of the year in May, June, July, August, and then they got cool and cold again at the end of the year in September, October, November, and December. So we know that in Anchorage, we can expect to see that same pattern of temperature change over the seasons every year. Today, we're gonna to use this book to find out how meteorologists show and describe information about temperature and precipitation in a place over a long period of time. Now, quick pop quiz. Do you remember the word that I told you in the last lesson that means information about temperature and precipitation in a place over a long period of time? If you do, tell me. It starts with the letter C. Yeah, the word is climate. The climate of a place is the weather over a long period of time. Okay, for the next activity, you're gonna need that investigation notebook, page 43, and something to write with. So go ahead and get that ready now. All right, let's look at the directions of this page. It says that we're gonna turn to page 11 in the World Weather Handout, or Handbook rather, but you don't need to get that book. I'm gonna show you the graph that you need to do this activity. What you're gonna do is use the graph that I show you to answer questions A through F. Here's the graph you're gonna use. If you look at investigation notebook page 43, it's asking questions about which months were the rainiest and which months were the driest. Take a look at these two graphs. Which of these two graphs do you think you need to focus on to answer questions A through F? I'll give you a second to make your decision. Which graph do you think? Did you read the title of both graphs? The green graph says average high temperatures in Anchorage, Alaska. The blue graph says average total precipitation in Anchorage, Alaska. So the green graph is about temperature and the blue graph is about rainfall. So which of those two graphs do you think we should use? Yeah. We're going to focus our attention on the blue graph because the questions have to do with the rainiest and driest months 
and that means we're studying rainfall. So we're gonna focus our attention on the blue graph. All right, pause the video here, answer questions A through F based on the data in the blue graph. When you're done, unpause the video and meet me back here. All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at the blue graph and see what you came up with for questions A through F. I'm not gonna go over every answer, but I do just wanna make sure that we're on the same page about how to read the graph. So one of the questions on page 43 asks you which month you might predict would be the rainiest. Like if we were gonna guess five or 10 years into the future, what Anchorage would be like on its rainiest month, which month would you choose? August is the rainiest month here. September is the next rainiest month. So we could predict based on this data that August and September would be the rainiest months. What about the driest months? Which months would you pick? Thanks for sharing your answers. The driest months according to this data are April and March. It actually looks like it's pretty dry in Anchorage from January all the way to like May or even June. So you can see that it's pretty dry at the beginning of the year. And then in July, August, September, October, that's kind of the rainy season. And then it starts to go back down again in November and December. So we could use this data to make predictions into the future. Great job. Why was it possible to use this graph to make predictions about the rainiest and driest months in Anchorage? What do you think? Did you notice at the bottom of this graph, there are some words? I'm gonna read them to you. Each bar shows the average total precipitation for the month. Averages were calculated from many years of data. So was this graph taken from just one year of data? No, it was taken from many years. The average was taken from a bunch of different years and that's how they came up with these numbers. So these numbers are pretty reliable. That means we can trust them to use to make predictions. This graph right here doesn't tell us exactly what the precipitation was for any particular year. So this graph doesn't represent 1960 or 1973 or 2013. This graph is an average graph, which means it takes into account a lot of years of data. Here's what I mean. This is the temperature graph. If you look at the one in the top left corner that says 1970, here I'll circle it with my mouse, here's the data for 1970. In the middle is the data for the year 2000. And over here on the right is the year 2010. If we take every year of data from 1970 all the way to the year 2010, that's a lot of time. So if we take all of that data and we find the average, which remember is kind of the middle number we can use to represent a lot of data, then we can boil it all down to one graph that's really easy for us to read and understand. All right, that was quick but it was fun. So thanks for joining me for lesson 3.3 Seasons and Climate part one. I hope you'll join me again for part two. In part two we're going to be analyzing some more weather data so we can make our decision about the orangutans. All right until then stay safe, stay curious, and I hope you get a chance to get outside today and enjoy some nice weather. Later!